Hello, this is Julia Whittup with shamanicarts.studio and I have with me this morning Matthew O'Brien who is going to teach us how to read tarot cards. I'm going to try. Okay. So, um, we were talking just for a very brief moment before we started recording uh, about how to read cards. And I was describing how when I started years and years ago as a teenager, I bought my first uh, a Rider weight deck and I came with a little instruction book about the size of the pack of the cards and I would lay out some cards and I'd look at the little book and I'd lay out some cards and look at the little book and, and that was okay, but it never, it was kind of difficult and it never really caught on. So I set that aside and then it was uh, years and years and years later that I found somebody who actually you know, has been reading for 50 years and she taught me how to read the cards because she explained that the tarot is describes cycles of life it's not just all these cards that each mean something which is part of it but it also if you look at the whole picture it describes cycles of life and um, I was like okay and that, that worked and I was able to start reading and started getting some really good information um, enough that I started reading professionally and then uh, fast forward there comes a time after you get enough practice, you start seeing it from new angles and different things. And I, uh, you know, we're, I'm a big geek and you know, we're a nerd family. Mm -hmm. So Star Wars, Joseph Campbell, I was actually reading Hero with a Thousand Faces. Uh, and I was like, wait a minute, that's, that's a cycle true. of life. And so if that's a cycle of life and that's a cycle of life, I wonder if they come to fit together. Boom. Woo! So I'd, uh, I'd been teaching people how to read, but it was kind of informally, just one student at a time, one-on-one, kind of, you know, like when you sit with your bestie at, a, at the kitchen table and All right. your favorite beverage late into the night and, and just kind of explain it as you go. But I was trying to figure out a way to do it systematically. And it occurred to me that, okay, the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell's work in the hero's journey, it's not a perfect fit, but it's close enough to get you started and get you up and running uh, very quickly. So the idea is, if you can watch a movie, you can read tarot cards. Cool. And that's what I do. <laughs> okay. So did you, would you like more about that? Or yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Like to know. Can you lay them out and show us how you do that? Um, I don't know that I have the technology to uh, lay them out and show you visually here. Okay. I can describe it. Um, so if you've seen anything, um, you can, I mean, there's, there's any number of websites. It's very easy to do a Google search, uh, image search for um, hero's journey. And mm -hmm. it's always a cycle. Uh, typically it starts at the top and works its way around. And you know, we start from, the beginner and you get a whole bunch of action and then somewhere around down here down the bottom you get some kind of confrontation and transformation mm -hmm. and then you come up here and you start you get this ultimate test because you know you can transform it's like uh, when when peter parker got his got his spider powers it's like okay but that's not the end of the movie now he's got to test out those powers and see see how they work what are the limits and whatnot and then he's got to be tested does he does he deserve those is he going to keep them and so over here and then, okay, yes, he passes the test or fails. Um, and then oh, everything starts slowing down, returns back to normal again. Okay. And I figured, it seems to me, that's awfully close to the four different suits where you have earth as a very stable, uh, your pentacles, your earth, that's a very stable, solid, mm -hmm. frozen place. And then you start getting into some action, which is mm -hmm. the domain of air. And then that action starts to heat up and, and, and get some friction. And there's your, and then you get on into the fire, the cauldron of transformation where things okay. get it's burned away. Okay. Well, after that, now you got a, now you got, it's like a, if you're tempering steel, you hammer it, you hammer it, you hammer it, you make it hot. And then you got to wet, get it wet and hammer it some more and wet and hot. And so it's, it, it gets harder and it's tested. And that's now you're in the domain of water. And then that, and then everything continues to slow down, slow down, slow down until you get right back to the beginning. Although it's never actually a full circle, at least not in life, because you never actually go back to exactly where you started. Right. It's, spiral. it's like, I'm close. This, this looks familiar, but it's not exactly the same because I've had some experiences. 
So that's, it seemed to me that those are the, you know, there's your, there's your four elements. And then where do you place all the cards? Uh, when I teach in, in the course that I teach, I break it down into the minor arcana, which are your kind of, your more of your day-to-day activity cards mm-hmm. and then the major arcana, which are big archetypal life theme sorts of cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, minor arcana describe a cycle the major arcana describe a cycle it's just what language are they using to do it Mm -hmm. okay so i put the minor arcana on the on the circle uh so that you can see about where they fit now is there any way of saying the two of swords means exactly this fits right here and there's nothing else no no the tarot uh it tells a story but it doesn't, it's not, uh, they're not hard, exactly fixed. They communicate ideas. Um, so generally the two of swords would fit here and the three of swords would fit here and the fives and the sixes would fit here. And the same is true for any of them, any, any of them. Uh, and then you can break out also, if you want, you can break out the, uh, the core cards. Your, your pages are certainly up there. They're the beginning, the heroes, the beginning of the journey. And then the knights are, Okay, now the, the action's accelerating. And now the queens, okay, we've had some transformation and now we're gonna start thinking about the bigger picture. It's not just about me anymore, now it's how do I use this transformation, the gifts that came with it? How do I use that to help other people? And then the kings, okay, now we're all philosophizing and we're slowing down. We're mm-hmm. thinking lofty thoughts and bringing it back to the people. Okay. And then the major arc kind of do. Uh, at least one lap around as well. At least one, sometimes two, depending on how you look at it. So did you come up with a new layout while you were doing that? Did I come up with a new layout? Do you mean a, a new spread? Yeah. Oh, I, I've i been doing, doing new spreads. Um, I seldom do standard spreads um, oh. because, I don't know, it's just not my personality type. I... Uh, you can do so much with three cards uh, that I just kind of riff on that. Um, I'll do, depends on the situation, depends on the reading, depends on what I want to know, or, or if I'm reading for somebody else, how much time do they have? Um, how much do they want to know? Um, so you can get a whole lot of information out of one card, uh, a lot of information out of two cards. You can lay them two cards side by side to give you kind of one representation. Mm-hmm. I designed my, I designed my, uh, my layouts um, based how they visually, what they, the, the layout visually represents to me. How does, how does it kind of connect? So you can do them side by side to give kind of a sequential order or a cause and effect thing, or you can stack them on top of each other to get layers of meaning. And then you can do the same with three cards, you know, and then then three cards, you can do past, present, future. Although I seldom do past, present, future because, well, you already know where you are. Mm-hmm. You don't really need a lot of information about that. And for most people, it doesn't really matter how you got here. It's okay, you're here. What are you going to do next? How are you going to get there? Right. To do where you are now, just to give us a, a reference point, kind of an anchor point in time. And then, oh, one of my favorites is where you are now, what your best possible outcome could look like for whatever situation. Uh-huh. Right there in the middle. How are you going to get there? What can you do to get from where you are to where you want to go? That's okay, what. So that's a three card spread. That's a, that I can do that as a three card spread or the great thing is you can, you can multiply it. You can do it as a nine card spread. You can do it. Uh, three, if you really only need one card just to kind of give yourself a reference point for right now. Well, we don't need to lay nine cards and get, we could do uh, what about our one card here? from right now just to give us a reference point and let's do three cards for your best possible outcome what would your best possible outcome look like in terms of spirit mind and body Mm -hmm. and then really flesh it out what is that best possible outcome for your love life your career your whatever and then in the middle you can do the same you can do one or two things give yourself some ideas you can do three cards well here's what i can do spiritually to get from where i am to to that here's what i can do Mm-hmm. And emotionally here's what i can do in my physical world and you can just expand that and expand that and expand it the biggest version i have done of that to date was 15 cards wow that particular spread 
Uh -huh. Okay. But then, you know, there's always the Celtic cross and anything else. You know, they, I, I've never found a bad spread. How does the Celtic cross work? Celtic cross, that's a pretty standard one. Uh, a lot of people love it. It's a, it's a 10 card spread with the current situation in the middle. And then there's a wheel around it that describes um, what's known about the situation or what's, and what's unconsciously hidden, or what, what the past influence was, what's the coming influence. And there's several ways of reading the cards that go around the wheel. And then off on the right, there's a ladder describing your internal states about your, your internal life around the issue, your external life around the issue, warnings, opportunities, things to pay attention to, and then the final outcome up here. So it's a, it's a really good uh, general overview. I'll use that one. That's about the only standard one that I use. Okay. Generally speaking, it's like, okay, if I've got somebody comes out, comes to me with a, a big thorny question, it's like, okay, well, let's just take a broad overview. It's like a satellite view of the situation. Mm -hmm. And then we'll zoom in and see what we want to focus on. Where are the, the juicy opportunities to change things, to, to make things happen? Right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. What else? Just like a hero doesn't really, the hero's journey doesn't, the hero doesn't just stand around and wait for things to happen. My general approach to reading is, okay, we can do some divination and see what did happen. We can do some divination and to see what's likely to happen, but I'm not really big on being just passive about it. Um, so let's, what can we do to change the outcome? What can we do to influence the odds in our favor? Yeah, I like that idea. Because it's awful to get a reading and think, oh my God, <laughs> that's a terrible outcome. And there's nothing you can do but wait? Oh no, 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 no. I don't accept that. I mean, that might be the answer, but usually there's at least something you can do to mitigate. Oh, I think they've proven that intuition when you have an intuition of something bad happening, you can change it. I find that the, the way we think about the world, our thoughts do tend to influence reality. Yeah. And that's one of the, the, one of the things that I like very much about Tarot is that it, uh, it's a, it can be a systematic way for people to start accessing and, and enhancing and developing their intuition. Um, it's like if somebody wanted to get fit, um, physically fit. Okay. Well, you can start walking or you can start doing CrossFit or you can start running, you know, Ironman triathlons. It just depends on how much effort you want to put into it, but here's a systematic way and the tarot, the tarot, you know, systematic, boom, boom, boom. Right. You can go as far with it as you want or, or not. And did you join our group so people can get a hold of you there? If I did. They I did. I actually off. signed up. Great. You sent me a link to sign up, but I had already signed up. I was like, oh, hey. Okay, great. <laughs> so any of my members who are watching, you can find Matthew on, at the membership directory. Yes, indeed. And follow up more with him. Is there anything else you want to tell us about Tarot? Um, it's just, I, I think everybody, most people who are going to be watching this already have an idea of what Tarot is. And... There's so, there's so many ways of doing it. You, you don't have to study deeply. You can just learn how to lay the cards out and look at the pretty pictures and see, just kind of get an, a, into it, what they're trying to tell you. Or you can study them and get a sense of what they actually mean and then mm -hmm. start building that way. And then, or eventually, you, you know, with enough practice, the card's just a tool to help you get that direct connection anyway. Right, right. But it's nice. Sometimes you need something like that. Like, sure. You know, for journeying, you use the drum. Mm -hmm. You need something like that to get into that different altered frame of mind. Yeah, one of my favorite things is to, is to mix and match. Let's do some mixed media. Let's get some tarot. Let's get some drumming. Let's get some of this. Let's get some of that. Let's put it all together and have a big experience. That. Uh -oh. That sounds fun. That, that's a lot of fun. That sounds fun. It's one of my favorites. Well, let's talk about... Um, I'd like to talk to you privately about setting up some kind of a event around that. Okay. Well, sure. We'll do that. I'd be happy to talk about that. Okay. So stay tuned at shamanicarts.studio and we'll get 
get uh, Matthew scheduled in to do something like that. Sounds good. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being with us, Matthew. You're very welcome. Thank you.